I'm Alan Kenny, Editorial Director with REIT.com, and we're in New York for REIT Week 2015, near REIT's Investor Forum. Join me as David Nunez, President and CEO of Rainier. So David, it's been about a year since your company split. Can you give us an idea how the two different uh, sections are performing and what that means uh, for the company going forward? Well, I think uh, uh, the split in, in Rainier um, w was really um, something that we've seen as a natural progression within this industry. Uh, the forest products industry um, and the timber REIT uh, sector uh, has seen a gradual um, uh, um, sell-off or, or spin-off of manufacturing assets to become more pure uh, timber play. And so from a Rainier standpoint, we've seen that with, um, with what we've emerged as a pure play uh, timber REIT with 2.7 million acres uh, in the U.S. And, and New Zealand. And so, you know, we're excited about that uh, from the, the clarity of that. We're excited about it from uh, the capital structure standpoint, uh, we, we are, we're no longer sort of in a mode of competing for capital in, um, in, in two different businesses. And then lastly, it allows investors to really specialize. I think we had, in, in a pre-spin environment, we had investors that were focused more on the performance fibers business, other investors who were focused on timber, and now it really allows for investors to select uh, which of those companies they want to be with. And so I think in that sense, it has, it has operated as planned. And with your Timberland assets being broke up in three different uh, geographic regions, can you give us an idea of what expectations look like there for the next uh, six months? Sure. Um, the, 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 the three geographies that we have organized our timber are in the U.S. South, where we have 1.9 million acres, the Pacific Northwest, where we have just under 400,000 acres, and then New Zealand, where we have a little over 400,000 acres. And each of those geographies really serves, to some degree, some different markets. Uh, in the southeast uh, market, it's really a play on two things, the uh, pulp and paper demand and housing recovery. So uh, we've had relatively strong pulp and paper demand, and we see um, good pricing in that geography. I think the, the, uh, the housing uh, demand is still uh, low as it relates to, to lumber prices converting back into saw log prices. So, you know, that's still a gradual recovery. The Pacific Northwest has a different mix. It's, it's got a mix that's you know, roughly 80-20 between the domestic market and export market. Uh, the export market there is, is uh, heavily reliant upon China, which currently has um, uh, high inventories of logs, and so we're seeing, we're seeing a reduction in uh, uh, the amount of wood flowing into the China market due to those inventories. And then New Zealand has, a, has an even stronger mix of export uh, business. It's got roughly 40% of its mix going to export markets and 60 to the domestic market. The export market there is really dominated by three markets, uh, South Korea, China, and India, all of which are, are unique market diversification opportunities for the New Zealand market. So we like to think of our three geographies as really providing greater diversification for uh, an exposure to timber for investors. And what about the demand drivers for timber? I mean, overall, how do you see those holding up? I, I think the demand drivers are really going to be a function of general improvement in economy, uh, the improvement in housing starts. Uh, we're, we're seeing a gradual recovery to the housing starts uh, from where we were in 2009, 2010, and we think that we're on the path to getting to a trend level of housing uh, you know, sometime in, in, in the next uh, two to five years. Thank you so much for your time, Dave. Thank you. And for more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.